Ladies and gentlemen, we are just two weeks away now from Black Ops Cold War Zombies being in our hands and Treyarch have just blown the lid wide open explaining a insane amount of gameplay mechanics and details such as perks and skill tiers, weapon rarities, custom loadouts, field upgrades, armor and salvage, support score streaks, looting and crafting, ping system and more. There is a ridiculous amount of information to get through in this video, but it is imperative that you watch this all the way through to the end without skipping because I don't want you guys missing out on anything. And if you're excited for Cold War Zombies in just two weeks time, leave a like rating and I'd love to know your thoughts on this all in the comments, but I don't want to waste any more time. Let's talk about perks. A huge talking point is the ones that we'll be able to collect and use as at launch how they work and how to upgrade them so on launch day we'll have six different zombie perks to crack open juggernog quick revive speed cola stamina up deadshot daiquiri and the all new perk elemental pop now we have a description for every base level perk at launch and it sounds like some of our favorites are getting a little bit of a nerf to start with so juggernog when you buy juggernog with its base level perk it's only going to increase your max health by 50 which means juggernog is only going to give you one additional hit. Now at first this sounds ridiculous that they're changing Juggernaut so severely that it will only give you one hit now instead of two but that's where the upgrades come in so we'll get into those in a moment. Quick Revive reduces the time it takes to regen health by 50% and the time it takes to revive an ally by 50%. Speed Cola increases your reload speed by 15% so not a big increase to start with. Stamina Up increases your run and sprint speed. Deadshot Daiquiri aiming down sights moves to enemies critical location, removes scope sway an elemental pop makes every bullet have a small chance to apply a random base ammo mod effect. Now, while zombie veterans will be familiar with the initial versions of most of the starting perks, elemental pop is something different. This perk is all about ammo mods. With every shot fired while elemental pop is active, you'll have a slight chance for a random base ammo mod to take effect against your target. An incredibly useful tool for when your back's up against the wall. But what happens when you want to take your perks to the next level? Well, that's where the all new skill tiers come in. And in zombies, every perk can be permanently upgraded to three levels. That's right permanent upgrades. So to upgrade perks, you're going to need to earn something called raw ethereum crystals by reaching milestone rounds within the game or through successful exfiltration. What's more, you'll be able to upgrade skills related to field upgrades, ammo mods and weapon classes to help you stay alive even longer as you collect and invest more ethereum crystals. Over time, you'll use these crystals to improve the tools in your arsenal, improving their damage and utility to help you reach higher rounds. As an example, here Here's how upgrading the elemental pop perk from its tier 1 effects to its tier 3. So tier 1 will have equipment damage also having a small chance to apply a random base ammo mod effect. Tier 2 will reduce the ammo mod cooldown by 20% and tier 3 is when a random ammo mod is applied it uses your current skill tier instead of the base. And don't worry they'll be introducing more perks throughout the post launch season. Unbelievable. Now let's get on to the topic of weapon rarities. So perks are essential but let's be honest survival in zombies is all about the weapons. In previous iterations, too many zombie players were left trying to figure out which weapons were the top tier for any given situation based on their wall buy price or by rolling them from the mystery box and hoping for the best. This time around, the new weapon rarity system gives every weapon a path to greatness. So here's how it works. Weapons come in five tiers of rarity. Common slash loadout, uncommon, rare, epic, and legendary. Each tier increases the damage done by those weapons and will also determine how many randomized attachments will come along for the fight. So for example, an uncommon weapon will feature around a 50% damage boost over its loadout version and comes with just two attachments, while the legendary version kicks out up to 300% damage and comes stacked with eight attachments. But how does this affect wall buys and the mystery box you ask? Doesn't this new system make those less effective? Well, fear not. Weapon rarities make wall buys and the mystery box even more worthwhile by giving you more options in any given game. Find your favorite weapon off the wall is now different every time with random attachments thrown into the mix and the mystery box actually increases its odds of rolling higher rarity weapons as the rounds get higher. This creates a new layer of strategy to keep in mind as the match goes on. What happens if you hit the jackpot on your first spin of the mystery box and get an epic magnum at round 10 and then roll an uncommon AK-74U on your next spin? Let's just say you're more comfortable with SMGs but you know your damage potential will become lower as a result of switching. Which one do you keep? 
Well, previously, if you had a strong weapon in the mystery box, you had very little motivation to put it back. Now, if you roll a weapon you're happy with early in the game, you can return 10 rounds later and try to roll the legendary version. The mystery box also now includes support items such as the sentry turret and the war machine, which always comes in handy. And a quote from the lead zombie systems designer, Kevin Drew, I've been playing zombies for 10 years and this is the most excited I've ever been when opening the mystery box. Now, let's talk about custom loadouts because this is something which worried me a little bit. Now, first and foremost, empowering players to bring all of their unlocked weapons and cosmetics into zombies takes the action up a notch and gets everyone into higher rounds faster. It gives the player more freedom to play the way they want to play, especially for those who want to get a better feel for how much fun zombies can be after the first few rounds. Loadouts don't change the classic zombies formula as much as we might think, however. If starting out with a classic 1911 is your jam, you can do that. The design team carefully considered how loadouts would affect weapon progression and as such, loadouts are simplified compared to those in multiplayer so you can only bring in a single weapon and a field upgrade with your zombies loadout furthermore that single weapon will have its attachments and cosmetics but it will be the lowest rarity available meaning the common version that means that the starting weapon you bring in won't be very effective at killing zombies after a handful of early rounds and you'll still need to get out there and find other weapons quickly you can also upgrade the rarity of your loadout weapon in game so you can keep your customized loadout weapon into higher rounds if that's more your style. Now with the loadout, not only do you have your weapon, but you have field upgrades. And these are entirely different from the field upgrades you find in multiplayer and for good reason. These are tools designed to fit the narrative of the Dark Aether story and provide a welcome power spike as part of the combat loop without making players overpowered in the process. So there are going to be five field upgrades available at launch and we see these in different parts of the trailers frost blast which creates a frigid blast of wind that deals frost damage and slows enemies caught inside of it slowed enemies take additional damage healing aura which summon beams of energy down on yourself and allies to heal to full health instantly an energy mine which creates a mine of pure energy that detonates on proximity of enemies dealing explosive damage ring of fire which creates a ring of ethereal fire that boosts damage for you and your allies normal enemies who enter gain a burning effect that deals fire damage and ether shroud phase into the dark ether for five seconds becoming hidden from enemy detection the design of these are to take inspiration from several abilities in previous games including certain gobble gums elixirs and even non-passive perks each one is balanced with an appropriate number of zombie kills required to charge it for example the healing aura has the upgraded ability to revive players in the map remotely what the heck but it requires double the kills to charge than an offensive base field upgrades such as an energy mine now let's talk about armor and salvage i touched that on a video a little while ago but finding the parts to build and craft a zombie shield is no more it's been replaced with a new armor system which provides a 360 degree layer of protection from the armies of the undead armor can be found as a rare drop from zombies or purchased using salvage when it's worn it will mitigate a portion of incoming damage every hit will still deal damage but it's durable ability is limited. Although armor is partially repaired by picking up an armor shard dropped from certain enemies, it's a finite resource and you'll find yourself vulnerable again once you run out of salvage to repair it. We can also fully repair armor by picking up a carpenter power-up. Now armor can also be upgraded to two additional levels, increasing its damage mitigation and durability. And you're going to need it as the rounds progress because zombies grow stronger every round. So it sounds like there's no health cap like there was in Black Ops 4. But remember, even when paired with an upgraded juggernaut perk no amount of armor can save you if you find yourself overrun especially as rounds get higher and the challenge increases now let's talk about support and score streaks so Treyarch have wanted to bring score streaks to zombies for a long time and now that player progression is unified there's never been a better opportunity while certain zombie maps have included some variants of these in the past the new dark ether narrative offered the perfect chance to finally carry over some of the militarized versions into zombies to raise the stakes even higher but here is the full list of support that we can use in zombies a combat bow a sentry turret a war machine a chopper gunner and a self revive Keep an eye out for one of these to pop out of the mystery box if you're lucky. And for those curious about how calling in a chopper gunner works without being instantly ripped to shreds while you're controlling it, any support that takes perspective away from your character will temporarily make your character immune to damage and ignored by zombies while it's deployed. This ensures that parties of one can make use of support in solo games as well. This all sounds fantastic, but there's still more looting and crafting. It pays to stay resourceful during an undead invasion. And in Cold War zombies, every zombie has a small 
reasonable chance of dropping resources including salvage, armor, and even lethal and tactical equipment. The tougher the enemy, the better the loot is that's going to be dropped. As we unlock equipment and score streaks through standard progression, that content will become available at the crafting table in-game and can be crafted using resources. Rarity is also assigned to loot based on its effectiveness. So for example, a frag grenade is considered uncommon loot where the symbol monkey is a rare drop. Now let's talk about the optional exfil. So why die out if you don't have to? With this new option to exfil from the map when your squad can't last much longer, you can roll the dice and try to survive long enough to escape with some extra rewards, but it won't be easy. Starting at the end of round 10 and every five rounds after, we'll have the option to use a radio in the starting area of the map to call in exfil. In a co-op game, a majority of the players must vote to initiate this. Once it's triggered, the normal round will end and you'll be given a new objective to reach the exfil site within a specific time limit, so it sounds a lot like extinction. At this point, zombies will begin to flood the area in a last ditch effort to stop your squad in its tracks. Once you reach the site, a helicopter will fly in and hover above until the zone is cleared before it can land. If you manage to make it onto the chopper, you'll escape with some bonus XP and the chance to earn raw ethereum crystals. Risk versus reward. And finally, they are bringing the ping system into zombies, a locational ping system. It will function the same way it does in multiplayer, activated by pressing left on the d-pad on controller and z on keyboards by default. So whether you're marking the next door you need a friend to open, pointing out the pack-a-punch machine to a first timer, or pinging the latest location of the mystery box, Treyarch thinks this feature will bring a huge quality of life improvement to Black Ops Zombies players. And that is pretty much everything that's gone over with the gameplay systems, which is absolutely insane. Treyarch also debuted the world premiere of the new Zombies theme called Echoes of the Damned, which I'll leave down below in this video's description. And Treyarch also mentioned about an amazing calling card that you can unlock to use on day one of Black Ops Cold War. And every single one of you that watch this channel religiously knows about the nuclear family meme. Well, the Pawn Takes Pawn Easter Egg ended yesterday and Treyarch went and done it. They have made a calling card called Family Portrait, which is an image of four zombies as a nuclear family behind a nuclear explosion in a forest. They mentioned that this was created to commemorate the community's role in helping to solve the maze of secrets along the way and comes bundled with a Pawn Takes Pawn themed weapon charm to equip at launch. Now, I've got to say, fellas, there is a lot that they are changing with zombies, but I think this is a fantastic set of changes that's going to make this such a more accessible mode to everyone that plays Call of Duty. I really feel with this year's Cold War Zombies, it's no longer going to be that little game mode that's grown into a big deal. This is going to be even bigger than it's ever been before. And what is absolutely fantastic is that compared to Black Ops 4 Zombies, where they made so many changes to the Zombies gameplay systems, they didn't explain any decisions on why they did the changes they did and didn't explain it before release. But here we have everything laid out to us in black and white two weeks before the game's out, which I think is absolutely incredible of Treyarch and commendable that they are deciding to do such a 180 with the community explaining such massive changes so early on before the game's release. It is absolutely fantastic. If you guys are excited, destroy that thumbs up button on this video. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the latest and greatest Black Ops Cold War Zombies news. And of course, we're two weeks away and I'm sure there's still more for them to explain. So anytime we do get more info, this will be the channel for it. So be sure to stay tuned. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. I'll catch you in the next one.